slightly <laughs> understaffed. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> slightly underrepresented um, at no, we yeah, I got it. Do not have a form to take action. Kristen, can you hear okay? I can. Yeah, I think I just heard we do not have a quorum to, to take an action. Recording in progress. Yeah, but Emma should be here, so. Okay. But in the meantime, we can still have discussion around the scope of work to yeah. people's hearts content. Okay. So, I mean, I would love just to uh, just give like a recap of what we discussed. And I mean, I think it's in the Kristen, do you want to do just an overview of the process that you yeah. had with Nathan? Sure. Yeah, it was a little difficult here. So, yeah, um, I, uh, I mean, at the outset, I would just like to thank Nathan for just accommodating our, you know, our collaborative review process and landing on what is before us um, this evening. Uh, we, Rhett, Amanda, and myself met with Nathan uh, two times, um, which again, kind of got us to the, to the final draft that we're looking at this evening. Um, you know, we spent a fair amount of time just having some larger conversations around community engagement and how they look differently in our two different communities and really just brainstorming around, you know, effective strategies given, given those differences um, and, you know, adjusting timeline given, uh, you know, that our approval process has been a little more long-winded <laughs> than intended and um, also making a change in the timeline to accommodate more uh, discourse, you know, among the board facilitated by Nathan, you know, once we have, you know, a draft final report in hand to really talk about, um, okay, now what and, and what we do with this from here. Um, so those were kind of the, the, the bulk of which what we, what we talked about across our two meetings and then um, just arriving, you know, Nathan provided us a contract and we're here tonight to really just any final review and comments on the scope of work. Uh, we have a contract to approve, which I think my understanding is ideally that's also, you know, going to be on the table this evening. And then, um, yeah, another piece that did come up is just our, our committee makeup and which board members want to participate as core committee members. It's, it's a bit of an undertaking. Um, so just want to identify, you know, who has the will, interest, and capacity to, to play that role and be um, sitting at the table with community members, including youth in our communities. So that uh, is also up for discussion this evening. But again, I just want to really thank Nathan for the super collaborative, inclusive, uh, patient, um, yeah, support as we arrived at, at what I think is a really fabulous scope of work. A pleasure working with you, as always. And, uh, yeah. I think Jim uh, and Anakin and Libby, who are not present for those discussions, the contract or the scope of work that we have in hand essentially has three layers of information stuff in. Black text is original, and then there's a series of strikeouts and non bold red is first round, but you know, that's our first round of discussion. And then bold red, our second round of discussion. So that's I was trying to represent content and the outcomes of the discussions that we had as transparent as possible because I think I'm in front of your seats having made you some more because of it. it if I, if, I, if I just transform this and didn't think it visibly changed, it might be back to some of the practices. So I think with that. I'm wondering if since we're a little bit in a, in a waiting pattern for, um, oh, there's Amanda. Sure. Well, Amanda gets settled. Do you want to, um, or could you just give a, a quick overview, Nathan, while we're in, in kind of a holding pattern a little bit. Yeah, I think I'm out of the holding pattern. 
Now we're out of a holding pattern, but we'll give Amanda a chance to get settled too. I do have a couple questions. Sorry, there you go. Yeah, go for it. Go for it, Annika. Um, this was to me. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so I was looking at the the, the vision um, the support. Um, and then the, in that application. Um, we're going to use this if I'm strictly thinking about um, the contract and negotiations and, and what's going to be the roadmap um, defined in the contract. Right? That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll use the scope of work as this is what we expect, this is what we're going to, um, I don't want to use the wrong word, but hold you to that, yeah. right? Cool. Um, uh, and and that this is what's defined. So the, Small, I'll start with a small thing. Um, on page three at the top, it says, I'm assuming that says, in my opinion. Um, and I, I felt kind of, well, this is a scope of work that we're going to um, go by. So instead of saying that, it's, you know, this is in my opinion, this is what they say, we should agree to something. Um, sure. Uh, and, and if this is what we're agreeing to, so then it shouldn't be in anybody's opinion. Uh, so this was to. Uh, speak for that. That's from the original. <coughs> the yeah, that makes sense. Sense. And I, what I was saying was, as pro in terms of around process for recruiting for the committee, uh, this is a committee of the board, right, to do this work. And so there will be board members and then other members of the community. And I, in that uh, writing, I was essentially asking questions to groups. Yeah, and then my, my point was that, yeah, let's just do that yep. and, and then close it out rather than leaving sure. it open. That's right. Um, if that's okay with everybody. So, this is a process question, and I think we will we may encounter some of these in the future, right? The, the board has many things in front of them and a defined calendar of activities already. Uh, in this case, so I proposed a, a committee of a, a pretty broad committee, right? 15 people, I think. And so if we wish to recruit members to that committee and then have the board approve them, in a perfect world, that would all happen sort of at one meeting and would be efficient. If you were if you were going to ask those prospective committee members to address the board and by extension the community, also that could happen at one meeting. But you start to time that out, it could take a four minutes to share. Uh, especially if there are multiple, we should we should be so lucky that there will be multiple candidates for limited seats. Uh, so, the question, Michael, you know, tonight is an example we have <clears throat> four four board members physically present, Kristen remotely. Uh, that's a quorum. Uh, it may be that some of the business of moving this project forward happens in this way, as opposed to at a sort of uh, the normal board meeting. I don't have a dog in that fight in this particular thing about who's on the committee, but you all know. Yeah. So that's a good question. I and mean, we could we could leave it as you know we could decide at that time or later. I, I was just mm -hmm. it just it just that language is important. Yeah, yeah exactly. Good, good point. Um, another thing on page four. Uh, we're talking about the rock security engagement. Um, again, a small thing, strategies with an asterisk. I couldn't find anything that defines what that asterisk right. was. So I think that will, to you know, page four, you said it three. Page four at the top. Okay. I think that in the original proposal, so what I did was I took the took language from the original proposal and made it into a scope of work. I think in the original proposal, which I will find right now, that asterisk nodded to or acknowledged the contributions made by Jerry and Brian because I consulted with them on my ideas for strategies and their. Um, <laughs> So I think that's that is an artifact for the short version. So should we just take out? Yeah. Right. 
So I think Emma might be waiting. Oh. Know what that is. Thank you. Yes, so in the original proposal, which I can show you here, uh, after it's there, bottom of that same page, thanks to Jerry Huff and Ryan Draco for the advice about the vision strategies. So we can simply scale to right. aspects. Um, and as a out of curiosity, we, we've list out, you've list out, we have listed out all these um, things in that engagement, right? This is what uh, it's going to look like. Um, who, maybe it's not defined, maybe that gets defined, but who is going to do those things? Is it build? Is it the community? Is it the community? It's, I mean, so it is, uh, it is, there's lots of things in there, right? Um, right. So it's some of that table is, in our three store. Right, so some of that is discussed earlier in, hold on. Where that is basically um, some of the core of this is an idea that the committee uh, that process the act of going through this process brings us all together and that in itself is valuable. And that I'm asking of the asking committee members, that's on page uh, page two, about a third of the way down. Uh, Okay, so uh, committee member's goal conduct 10 interviews each um, and build or pick up the slack. So, ideally, if for example, that were on the committee, that would be making 10 phone calls and making 10 contacts, whether that's within our story or within the video, uh, and it would be useful for those. Uh, those committee members to cross over and make contacts in the next time. And that's where we feel from the material and vice versa. Uh, so the, my intention is to share that work because then the committee, as I envision it, the people who serve on the committee can have a uh, useful leadership role or be resources for the board and the district even after this process, having formed relationships and, and done some of this work. If that, you know, if you know, if that five high school kids are not able to uh, contribute in that way to the committee work, so be it, then I will pick up the slack. Um, and then part of what, what happened in the negotiation was that in trade for reserving more time with the end of this process for me to work with the board on the implications of what we found, we've shrunk the, the goals, shrunk the expectations for how much, how many you know, survey participants will have. Um, and so that means that the lift, you know, the potential slack that I might pick up is less than it would have been because we're compressing the time. Is that satisfactory? Yeah, so, so that ties into, uh, that, that's where I was confused, like, okay, who's going to do these things next? Yep. If you're defining that the interviews that you're talking in the on page two, um, that's the strategies we get those interviews. Then that's so I have a couple just practical questions. Um, are we still to get five youth to engage? And also the Roxbury to Montpelier um, ratio is way out of whack. Are we okay with that? That's a question to ask to your subgroup first. Because that that was a that language was inserted after our first group conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean <clears throat> I think that this representation in Roxbury is pretty ambitious. I'm not super confident that there's going to be consistent committee representation from individuals. 
I have a feeling that there may be a group groups of people sharing in it, and I don't, I don't, I don't feel like the interviews is going to be how we get a lot of information, and I have no problem with it being more. I don't know what person thinks, but I have no problem with it, with it shifting more closer to the, the population, actual population numbers. I do think I will be reaching out to people in Roxbury an awful lot through this process and expect to take a lot of this as, as we do as much as I can possibly do. But I don't see people participating in this from Roxbury stipend. And that's like, the key, right? Having that consistent participation. It's not like, or if you say that you know, three non filial members, well, one week it's these three, and the other week it's some other three. That's not the case. That's not definitely going to give yeah. us the, the thing that we want. So, so I, I want to speak to that in just a moment. Jim, no, to you is that the language you're responding to, to Big Ben, which is five new branches. Seek to include greater than one fifty two students from the state. Intentionally, that that language is not directly released. Or that's for it, it, well, it's, a, it's aspiration. Um, recognizing the challenges. <coughs> uh, the second get, point. Of, sorry, sorry you're the second point what is 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 uh, saying that five adult community two out of the So that's true. Um, yeah. So, so that. So those ten. You hit the targets of talking 40, 60. Yeah. Or a okay. And so, 90, so in, in one of the things, it's, it's aspirational. Maybe we to change that language for the second bullet point, too. And that's what we're to So, I just want to ask Kristen if she wants to add something to that. It's it's tricky because a lot of the voices are really muffled, so I'm I'm not getting full, complete thoughts, unfortunately, which is making me really wish. I was there in person, but I mean, kind of coming back to Jim's original question, I think the concern was, was that the committee representation by Roxbury members was not representative of kind of the population ratio between the two towns. Is that right? It, yeah, I mean, I'm just raising it as a, a question because I think it, it kind of at least tacitly gets to the question of is this a visioning process for the whole district or is this a process with a large focus on kind of asking the question about maybe RBS, which I know is, is at least you know, part of this. And yeah, if you've got a committee, yeah, I mean, I assume we're gonna want one board member from Roxbury, if you've got a committee that Is, is is not representative of the the town, you know, the, the town realities. Um, are you going to get a result, especially if that both towns are going to buy it? I would just say that for me is putting a value system into the conversation that we need to have about Roxbury, not about the RSBA building itself, but about the community from what we heard in July, from the discontent, from what you brought about, like people feeling that, that there's two different communities. And by putting this together, we're acknowledging the fact that there's an equity issue. Yes. Doesn't matter if we have more people here than there, there's an equity issue in the realities of Roxbury. And by attempting to add more voices, which is what we need, we are actually doing the work. Are we going to get it? But we are attempting to bring that voice in. So I think that is important. When you have inequity, you have to at least attempt to try to bring. You cannot say more people are in Montpelier than live here because we don't have the we don't have currently the participation of, of Roxbury. So this is like an attempt to fill that equity gap. Because the committee is not itself the one only doing the work. There's like all the surveys, there's like the work that we're going to be engaging in creating those spaces and bringing together all those conversations forward. So the committee is not the only voice that is going to be building this 
right? It's like all of the other work that trickles into that. But in my opinion, putting that effort and say, and, and not counting, it's not a matter of who has the more students or who has the more families. It's a matter of we have an inequity system and we need to at least attempt to ensure that that voice feeds into the work. Because as a district, we are gonna be deciding the vision for everybody. So we can't have 10 people decide for two people. You know? So <clears throat> I think they, thank you. Um, on the school board, it's prescriptive how many seats are held by each community. Um, we could change this to make it prescriptive in this contract and then, you know, potentially face a permanent vacancy in a, you know, in a seat held open for somebody. Um, we could soften the language on the adult piece to seek to include, which allows us leeway. Uh, the So I want to answer I'm saying that, and then I also want to circle back to Anikit's comment about what will function if we don't, you know, Anikit was asserting that we need consistent participation by community members or it will not work. And uh, that might be true. My proposal included a larger committee on the assumption that we will not get consistent participation and that therefore what I'm seeking is, you know, if we have five students on the committee and we get three at a time and then three at the next time and then three at the next time, but it's not a consistent group, uh, not making the assumption that any group is monolithic. However, at in, the product of any single meeting, ideally will reflect voices from students, will reflect voices from, from adults, will reflect, and so, um, baked into the proposed design of this committee was an assumption that in real life, we will not get consistent participation. And the, and the, the alternative is we have a committee of nine, for example, and then when two people don't show up, we have no students, right? So that to me, that represented a more significant risk to the integrity of the process. No, I, I, I completely agree with that. I actually read that. I like that aspect where you mentioned that this is the reason why the committee is big. We understand the committee is big, but this is the reason that the committee is big. And I appreciate that. So my, my point was that not necessarily consistently in terms of um, two people not showing up for this meeting and then another two people not showing up for that meeting and the three showing up. My point was that there is a committee of 15, let's say, 15 show up because we said three from Montpelier and two from Roxbury. Well, three from Montpelier every time show up, but every time it's different three, but some other three that were not even part oh. of that. So we can't do that, right? Because we're saying that, hey, we need to have two Roxbury people and we couldn't even get those two. So so we're saying that, oh, out of those four, every time we're going to pick two. Oh, and that's different, right? So that's yeah, what good, I was good reading. To, to my, my intent, and my interpretation of what I wrote is that we will seek five fixed members of the committee. If it, if if Jim and Brett were students, student participants, and it became evident that because of Jim's uh, wrestling career in high school, uh, that he was not able to, to make see. meetings, we might, uh, <laughs> we might then seek to make a permanent change to find someone to to take that seat. But I do agree that we. Ideally, we want uh, the committee as formed in the next month to remain consistent, even if their participation in any given meeting is very good. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't want us uh -huh. to lock into we we said two more, two Roxbury people, and then you know one is showing up and the other is not. Let's get somebody else to show up mm -hmm. for this meeting because we have locked into this agreement. That's that's what. I'm okay. Yeah. So, but given. I appreciate that, and given what I just said about, uh, you know, if it becomes evident that there's a sort of persistent structural barrier to Jim attending, yeah, that, you're yeah, okay to, that, yeah, that's that's helpful. But it does raise the point that that should theoretically come before the board rather than I just call somebody I know and say we need you to step in. Right? Okay, so I'm going to 
I'm gonna put the phone for people to pass it around so we should hear. So it's just an, I'll try to be even louder. Okay, great. Yeah. Volume is helpful. Yeah, I, I mean, I would just, uh, I would just piggyback on what Amanda was saying. I mean, I think that the two, three split between Roxbury and Montpelier in terms of committee, you know, representatives was was intentional and in response to, um, you know, prevailing trends are that we tend to hear less from uh, Roxbury residents um, in terms of, you know, weighing in on process and policies and decision and showing up to 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 board meetings um, and that um, that we were trying to kind of backfill for that really and, and get that get that representation at the table. Um, so I yeah, I mean, I would be interested in maintaining maintaining that that ratio. I think that, you know, we and kind of our last meeting had the discussion around, you know, we are, how do we address the elephant in the room uh, around the RVS building and its use and um, there being community concern, fear and anticipation of school closure. And that, you know, kind of as the process moves along, we'll have to figure out, you know, when, where and how to, to pull that conversation in. Um, but that's, you know, a bit, you know, and, and I think generally going kind of way back where I think we really sort of reframed what this visioning process was about after the rocks, after the board meeting in Roxbury in July um, was about that we can't really make any decision about the RVS building until we've kind of done this bigger, broader, grander visioning work as a district and that that would form the use of all facilities going forward, whether that's, you know, concerns about Main Street Middle School and its capacity, it's, it's concern about RVS and its ability to be, you know, to be effective, um, you know, but that we needed to do this, this grander, broader work in order to inform facilities decisions. Um, so yeah, so going back to the, the two, three split, that was, you know, kind of the intentional reasoning behind that was to get more Roxbury voice at the table. Um, I'm actually quite optimistic, you know, that we'll, we'll get that and that we will be able to engage Roxbury, um, you know, folks in the community. I feel like even just since I've joined on the board and, you know, doing a lot of talking to people, I think people are really interested in in talking, they just haven't really necessarily seen themselves as part of the process much. Like there hasn't been much of an, a really clear direct invitation. And um, now that that's being put out there, I think more, I mean, I'm having really meaningful conversations with people on the regular about our schooling and our district and our kids' current learning experiences. So I, I feel like the voices are out there. It's just a matter of us kind of mining them um, and, and by having a couple different, and I think, you know, we also thought a lot about this, um, you know, committee makeup in terms of, this is also about relationship building between the towns. It's not just going to be Roxbury, you know, committee members that are interviewing Roxbury people, but it's Roxbury committee members also interviewing Montpelier people. And so that we're having kind of this community exchange is really built into the process. Yeah, no, that all makes sense. I just wanted to, to flag it. Um, as you know, uh, you know, we don't always like representation that's that's not equal to population in, in other contexts, you know, like Congress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Funny, I'm just taking at 7.30, I'm taking a class on equity and data, and this is one of the things that are coming up. So I can send you really nice slides that I'm learning about. Um, I wonder if it will help to put in just a line around, we will evaluate the process as we move forward in case there needs to be some changes so that you have the flexibility to be able to go back and say, well, this is not working. We need to rethink the way the committee is working. Sure. And I just want to circle, sorry, I was, uh, I like that. I was looking for looking at the original RFP slightly different to your question, Jim. Um, under four successful. Yeah, yeah. yeah, under number four successful proposals. Um, 
successful bids that will be considered for the contract will include, number one, a proposal for the makeup of the committee and ideas for recruiting committee members from throughout the MRPS learning com community and Roxbury in particular. And so that is, that is what generated in the original proposal and now in the scope of work, an explicit call out on my part for here's the Roxbury, here's my Roxbury strategy. No, it, yeah, no it, it totally makes sense. I just wanted to, yeah. to flag it. And also, you know, um, it's something that I think could be raised if, if there are Montpelier residents who don't love what comes out of this. Um, so let's talk, I, you know, that's the, to me, that's the meat, or that's the, uh, that is the highest stakes piece of your comment which is that you're identifying the risk that the final product might be tainted by the process, right? Yes, or it might be perceived as tainted by certain people who may not pay attention to it. Sure. And then it gets to a final point and then they say, what are you talking about? Like, this is, right. yeah. So I think that uh, it's a good point. I think it's worth, so, I was thinking about, so we have the school board, we have this committee, which is a committee of the school board, but made up of some representation of the community. And then we have this process, which will be taking input from the community at large. And the committee is going to be describing and reevaluating the process as we go and trying to execute on this and reporting back to the board. But the, so the committee is uh, a filter and, a little bit an author, right? But it's not, you know, the board is still the board, right? The board is still going to be the ones accepting the report and taking action based upon it. Um, there are members of the board on the committee who can, if I were really off track or even somewhat off track, could say, we need to change this process. And so I think that to me, uh, my response in August <laughs> were, were such a critique to be made would be to say, this is the structure of this arrangement. This is how the process went through. And so if, um, if there are complaints or critiques, those should be lodged with the board because the board had hands on and eyes on throughout. Um, and so I think, that, and I think we need to make that so, right? That's our obligation. And I would and add that we need to be very clear through the process of all the points of input people can have. So that will be the answer. It's like, here are all the ways that we did a call out and here are the ways that you could have engaged and here are the ways that. So if you have such person, um, yeah, it's, that could sorry. be that. It's good to identify the risk though. Uh, so I agree with that. Yeah, and, and that's have, all. Yeah, that's have, all. have the mitigation yeah. strategies. And to me, when I, when I think about it, the, the uh, as Amanda said, we are we are collecting input from the entire community. So that's that's the first line of defense is the wrong word, but the first first response, right? And the second is yeah, the makeup of the board who is going to take the action is representative of the the, the people and the population. So just because the committee is made up of this, you know, that doesn't mean so. But but I agree that that needed to be flagged in so that we are all aware this is what it is and we're prepared. And we, we feel prepared that this you know we're okay with it. So I'm 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 personally okay with the committee make up make up because of the other things that are that are going to support it. Yeah, no, I am too. I just wanted to flag it. So right. I I that's right there. It's right there, and yeah, the okay. first thing someone's going to look at is maybe suspicious of this. So it's good. And and. Go ahead. No, I, you know, I, I was going to ask another question on a different topic. Well, I think that the uh, to Amanda's proposal that we state, at least in this meeting, which is limited, uh, that we are open to evaluating the process as we go. I think that the, the board, my, my ask of the board members who are on the committee is that we, uh, if we are at a point like that, <clears throat> where we're changing the scope, where we're changing the approach, we name it and we check in to decide on the committee, is this something we need to bring to the board? Is it a you know is it a significant enough deviation, or is it we're still within? You know, I, I, 
many of these things I tried to write with some flexibility uh, in terms of implementation. But that is something that I will try to keep my eye on and I'll be asking board members sitting on the committee to apply that lens. I think as long as we have like the beginning of the essence, right? That you would talk about now. I feel like that's the important part that we're just flexible about this. You know, like the the rigidity is in the outcomes where like you have a plan if that is going to change the actual outcome that we need, then that's a little different. So I also just want to check that it's six fifteen. Unfortunately, I have to go six thirty. Yeah, I have so a I have to go feed my kids and do a training. So. <laughs> So that in effect, though, the, um, I was wondering if you have some language in there to, to call out the change process. Like, hey, we will have a change process. To, to, um, we do not have, there's not language in the scope right now. Uh, maybe in the contract. I'm laughing because I'm like, we can be two of this and one of them. <laughs> and you said it, but I said it. <laughs> I said we couldn't. Let's make sure you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to have a lot of a lot of language that allows us to be flexible with our process, and flexible with our expectations, while being consistent with a vision and a and the and yeah. an outcome. Because yeah. I think that there's going to be a lot of, we have, there, we cannot predict the future. We can't predict what the pandemic is going to do. We can't All predict right. anything. Um, I think, I think if we stress that we are trying to build relationships between these two communities and maybe we put language there, many members from Roxbury are going to explicitly be interviewing people in Montpelier and vice versa. It can sort of take some of that, give a lot of flexibility because I'm really looking forward to communicating with people in Roxbury, but I have concerns that I don't have opportunities to communicate with people in Montpelier. And I feel like I want to represent everyone as best I can. And I don't have those relationships. So I don't, I mean, that's just from a very personal perspective, but I would hope that this process will, will build relationships, whatever the outcome of the vision whatever the outcome of RBS, the district will be will be one district and if we don't have relationships, we'll have crisis. Yeah, that flexibility, I felt like it was built in. However, I just wanted to know if we should have a change process, some kind of call out that if it needed, if, if something needs to be changed that's significant, what's the process? It's it, that you ask, like, hey, should it come to the board yeah. or not? Like, who's going to make that decision? That, that decision needs to be, I think that needs to be in there somewhere so that so that we can say, yeah, that, you know, we changed it, but we followed that process and this is what happened, right? So it could be as simple as, yeah, any, any significant change would require a board approval or would require an approval from two members of the committee that are board members or something like that. So it could be as simple as a couple of things. Um, uh, under, let's see, page three uh, for the page, methods and practices. Uh, I call out a monthly 60 minute call or meeting with the board and administrative leadership, uh, with board and administrative leadership, i.e. not the whole board, but could be Libby and Jim, or it could be designees of the board, the progress support, Resolved items, pending items, new business. So this is sort of a, a click of the works model from architecture practice, right? Like what's pending, what have we resolved, what are new questions? Um, third bullet point, uh, notebook, uh, nope. um, seventh, six or seventh bullet point, make process changes, findings, and participation visible promptly. So that is not a process a change process, but it is a commitment to make changes to the process visible promptly. So we could elect to assert that the change process is that we, we, we make a proposal from the committee and that is taken up in the monthly call. Back to side, so that sounds good. All right, so. Uh, yeah. 
May I add one caveat? That if the committee proposes something and generally decides no, can that go to a report of the session? Thank you. Sounds reasonable. If there is a dis disagreement, but mm -hmm. either way, right? <clears throat> you said no, and they say yes. And the. Um, I might change that methods and practices to board designee, 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 right? Because I don't need to assume that it's Jim. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also don't know, uh, you know, I think that Libby's involvement is going to be significant with this. So I'm, so I am assuming that it's Libby, but. Um, Uh, so what I'm going to do, hopefully, for the before six thirty, is what I did last time at the meeting, which is try to implement all changes we discussed before I leave the room, and then send that document to the group I've been communicating with, which is Rhett, Amanda, Kristen, and Jim, uh, so that then that whatever we've just decided tonight is reflected in. You're not waiting on me. Yeah. No, if that's yeah, if that's approved then. Jim so can send it. Do, Are we making a action? motion to approve Pending. this contract? Pending the changes we yeah. was were discussed. And then you can give Kristen and Red the power to make this decision. <laughs> I'm going to make it. I don't I don't know if we th that needs to be. I think if it if the motion is to approve the contract pending the changes discussed, then Jim would just need, from a contractual standpoint, Jim would just need to sign it as the board yeah. chair. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a couple of questions? And I'm not obviously any stretch of the imagination or anything to do with reading um, contract documents. A couple of things came to me or, or jumped out at me. Um, page one. 1.3 in the middle there, it says the consultant will not use. I think everywhere else you just said um, build our school district. I mean, I'm just uh, creating the new version of the school. You on page one? I mean, page one, 1 1.3 in the middle of the uh, yeah. consultant will not use. And so, consultant to build will not use. Because there's no mention of what consultant is. Sure. Yeah, you're right. Okay. And so, then at the last, yeah, I could sound like a lawyer these days. <laughs> <laughs> the last line, uh, it says the client, and again, we're not defining client. We're saying school district. You are. You come through the time. Okay. I think you found a new helper at your uh, your Vermont law school. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have to. So which version of the contracts and have contracts for my oh, company? Same so paragraph. It, it's very right. similar. So, no, this looks similar. I'm gonna read. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you catch anything else like that? I did more vertical to horizontal. No, I did. Yeah, yeah, care of. Uh, so he was in the first one. The first one I saw. He's coming out. Uh, this is coming out. Uh, where else did you see so, it? No, I did. Okay, so we're still in 1.3. Yeah, 1.3. Okay. So client is school district. Yeah. And consultant is work. And I may, again, I, I skimmed through it. I may not have seen it, but. Yeah, what, what else we could do here after we could say build or consult in case you did it again. Mm -hmm. We could say school district or client in case you did it again. Yeah. And then the lawyer shows up. Yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You were, yeah, you were I, I was, I was yeah, I was mentioning that the, and this is just a question, maybe I missed it. Um, if the, does the contract, specifically say that uh, that you're going to provide the services and, and uh, end product which are satisfactory to the, to the school district. So uh, the satisfactory part is probably not, well, let's look. So 1.1 services, the school district has engaged build to provide consulting services. Build will provide services as described in the addendum A, scope of work for the duration described therein. 
Uh, and then later on, I know, or terminate me, right? Um, either part of me terminates, that's 12.3. Uh, dispute resolution is in dispute or controversy between the parties of class before arising out of or relating to um, modification, no modification, termination, or waiver of disagreement. Blah, blah, blah. So you're looking, you're seeing something that says to the satisfaction of an acceptable to the school district. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an interesting. I'm, I'm, I think I'm okay to, to add something like that. I don't have any more here. You know, the, the pickle there is I submit, right, I submit a report draft. Get feedback. I revise the report based on the feedback. Submit it again, and the district says this is unacceptable. Do we? You know, there's a. I mean, perhaps then we just trigger dispute resolution. Um, so, do you have proposed language to modify this? Okay. And I think it's a hard one. It's a hard one because there are just some pickles involved in this whole situation that are. Going to be, you know, I, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. I just can bet that there are going to be groups of people that either like it or don't. And I don't know how to, uh, what would, uh, what would constitute the approval of the district. So, so it's not that the the decision that the district can make is is whether it's satisfactory or not. That's where it's going to be. Some members of the community may not like that decision we're talking about the contract we're talking about vision process and what the what is the end product and so typically and again i'm not a lawyer and, and this may not be applicable i just thought that typically the contract that i've seen has the language uh in there that hey this needs to be satisfactory and acceptable at the end the end product needs to be uh, and and maybe there is some legal uh definition of that with enough Flexibility that that what satisfactory means, um, not the outcome. But right. The, the, well, it's yeah. in the sense that Nathan's not going to hand us a stack of post-its and say, yeah. "Here's my here's my report." Yeah, that's my report. Yeah. It, it just says yeah. about, "Hey, we're going to write a report." Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it needs to. Thank you. Uh, I think you have, yeah. you have something here about the report that would be like a professional quality. Why would I ever say that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I said that. Uh, let me, for, let me, I'm trying to open up the computer. Uh, Give me a second. Submit draft report, seek feedback, respond to questions. That happens in July. Mm -hmm. Submit final report, draft chairman, and recommendations. And announce the report recommendations and other outcomes to the commission. And again, I mean, we're That's talking all about. In July. Yeah, I, I mean, we're talking about contract things, right? The, we're all going to work together and it's going to be a great process so so that's not the point right so so we just add like a little provision in here that you know that you know all final products shall be you know following I mean, professional standards or yeah or if 1.1 1 1 we talk about services 1.1 like yeah. 1 .1 is where we talk about services when build is is going to provide services so provide services and then products that are satisfactory I, I mean, I, I would, I would say I would add to contact me and tell the people how to put that because this process is so collaborative. We have to come up with like do something. Like if we, if the committee decides not to do anything or we don't have committee feedback, you know, like so that it's like adding that. I think yeah, I think oh, I think that's. I still think that's like satisfactory. That yeah, be made yeah that's my point. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, reports that, yeah hey, we, we this is what I mean. The, we're that. saying the process is yeah. is we're going to get feedback, and based yeah. on the feedback, we're going to write report. If we don't get the feedback, the report's going to reflect that, and that is satisfactory report. That's yeah. the end product that is satisfactory. Exactly. But if yeah, post yeah. no post it. Don't you, hand it yeah. to yeah. yeah. Post it so, from from there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So two two comments. One. Uh, if 
the services I'm providing were not acceptable, likely that would be evident early, yeah, yeah. early yeah. in the process and would lead to termination of conflict resolution. Uh, I will have course correction and all that. Right. Yeah. It, it yeah. could be that I do fine, and then in the last two weeks, I decide to send you post it notes, which has been inconsistent with past behavior. Um, in 1.1 of the contracts, what was the like, consulting services? Da -da, then A, duration prescribed therein, uh, deliverable, you know, what, if, what would the wording be? Uh, um, we were going to have to wrap up. So we have four minutes for you guys to vote on this. <laughs> we're good. Let's get some language and we'll be done. So I've made the other changes. Okay, let's let's have a quick vote. We well, wait. Do you want to insert this language? Because right now it's not in there. Fine with me. I wrote it that way. <laughs> uh, I'm okay either way. I mean, I I do not have any worries about it. I mean, in there, that said, I think it's in there. And like, what we all expect to do. Yeah, I, I'm okay either way. Uh, I just I just thought I'd flag it because I've seen it in a whole bunch of contracts. Um, so that's that's the only reason I brought that. All right, who wants to make a motion? I make a motion to have a second. I'll second it. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great, we have an approval. I just, um, excellent, congratulations. Thank you. I'm Thank looking you forward to working with you. Thank you to the great work. Uh, yeah, and, and me, I appreciate it.